The stock market is flowing through waves of uncertainty and that has some investors ready to throw in the towel. And actually, I want to just mention right now, we're in the presence of a celebrity. This is Frodo Baggins. He is actually one of the stars in the movie Lord of the Rings. Hundreds of high school students were marching to the beat on Florida A&M's campus yesterday. Residents living on Old Shell Point Road must still rely on boats and canoes such as this to get to and from their homes. And many disappointed customers are blaming robberies such as this one on a struggling economy. Two children who were stolen along with their mother's car are back home and safe and sound. Next question here. Easy one, I think. What does Cinco de Mayo translate to? Cinco de Mayo translate to the 5th. The 5th of? March. The 5th of May. Come on, oh, it's May. Wow. Sorry, it's right in springtime here. <laughs> These local business owners are not only facing loss of merchandise, but loss of business. Residents on the Big Bend Coast were weathering the storm last night, and some folks in Alligator Point say they're used to being around water, but not quite like this. Many delivery joints have stopped using car toppers because they make the vehicle a target for robbers. Public health officials say at least one person in southwest Georgia has contracted E. coli. Now local residents are on high alert. Administrators say the simple click of a power button won't put a dent in their deficit. One Florida lawmaker is partnering up with a local agency to help combat the rising gang problem in the Sunshine State. Florida State University held its summer graduation ceremony as more than 1,000 students received their degrees. FAMU student Kiara Wright was supposed to receive her student loan on September 23rd. Now, 20 days later, the money is still not in her pocket. I've obviously had plans for the money to pay my rent, and it's affecting that daily life as far as my groceries and things like that. Almost 40 percent of FAMU students are facing the same dilemmas. The reason FAMU's primary loan lender, Ed America, has dried up. It's a delay in collections for the school. Um, it's not the student's fault per se. It's, it's a credit crisis that we're all having to deal with. Because of the loan delays, FAMU is processing more short-term loans to help students out with daily expenses. Mostly my rent, you know, I have to worry about my rent. Florida State University financial aid administrators say the credit line freeze is not affecting many of its students. Many of the lenders have gone out of business and as soon as we heard about that and the students had that lender in the past, we informed them. But no matter what university students attend, school officials say the credit crisis is making it almost impossible to receive any private loans. Really hard. Never been so poor in my life. It's like a struggle. I, it's hard for me. I mean, I'm trying to focus in with the economic crisis going on. It's, I didn't. I had no idea it affected us the way it did, but it has. Alexandra Pangree picks up her two-year-old son Harrison at daycare each day, but this Monday was emotional for Pangree. She was heartbroken when she heard a four-year-old lost her life at the Stepping Stones daycare Friday. It makes me not want to drop them off <laughs> and stay home with them and just hold them. But, um, you know, you got to go to work. What are you supposed to do when you have a fire truck? Friday's incident is prompting many parents to have this same conversation with their children. We talk about fire safety at home. It's like if you're at school, you have to be attentive and know what's going on around you. The state requires every school to have an evacuation route posted in each classroom and fire drills must be conducted every month. The Creative Child Care Learning Center conducted a fire drill just this morning. We do uh, perform monthly fire drills, and I thought the timing was perfect rather than waiting until our next scheduled fire drill. Johnston says it's important to keep procedures updated and constantly on the minds of employees. There's changes in classrooms, um, different teachers are hired, and uh, people are on vacation, you have substitutes, so I think it's important that we continue to remind staff. It can never really eliminate a parent's worst nightmare, but it does calm the nerves of many just to know there's a plan. It was hard, but I know that she's uh, with her teachers and we're in good hands in here. I know that she'll be okay. More than 40 percent of J.R. Martinez's body was burned when his Humvee hit a landmine while fighting in Iraq. It's a disability that's created challenges in his life. The Entrepreneurial Boot Camp for Veterans with Disabilities is giving men and women like J.R. the tools to start and own a business. You get to meet so many great individuals here throughout this course, and you get to say, "Wow, you know, you know." Just to, you get motivated by you know being around other people that are inspired to be successful in this world, and not just sit around. Fifteen vets from all over the country are at Florida State University this week for the nine-day training. 
The EBV program trains disabled veterans in small business ownership, teaching them how to write business plans, raise capital, attract customers, and develop marketing strategy. They'll have business language. We've brought in the best uh, professors from all over the country in entrepreneurship, and they'll get their benefit of their expertise. And then for a year after the program, they'll actually be mentored uh, by entrepreneurs in the hopes that they'll be able to start their own businesses. I want to make a difference in my life still. I don't want to just stop my life because of a disability that occurred. And I felt that this would be an opportunity to explore that and flesh it out a little bit more. The veterans say business ownership affords flexibility and a sense of freedom they often cannot receive through traditional employment. Angela Salerno, WCTV Eyewitness News, Tallahassee. Florida's universities are digging deep to keep the lights on around campus. It's going to be tough this year. A lot of new buildings on campus, you've probably seen them going up. The Board of Governors is asking the legislature to help schools like FSU. It's requesting $30.3 million to cover the additional cost of energy and other utilities. FSU is the largest consumer of electricity in the city of Tallahassee. They use more electricity than the Leon County Public Schools, Tallahassee Memorial Hospital, Publix, Walmart, and the Leon County court system. And so administrators say the simple click of a power button won't put a dent in their deficit. The 2008-2009 energy bill will cost FSU a little more than $24 million. And with skyrocketing prices, tax six more million dollars onto next year's bill. FAMU's cost is at $11 million. Next school year, that number will jump to almost $14 million. Aside from high energy costs, the Board of Governors say the universities are facing what they call a brain drain as faculty and staff leave Florida for higher paying jobs. Each and every one of us, especially in economic times as difficult as the ones we're currently living in, we need salary increases. The board will ask the legislature for $65.4 million to help keep faculty and staff in the Sunshine State. But this year's budget is already set in stone, so for now, administrators are doing what they can to cut costs without jeopardizing students' education. Angela Salerno, WCTV Eyewitness News, Tallahassee. It's an illness that knows no racial, ethnic, or social boundaries, and it's touched the lives of millions, including four-year-old Luke Scott. Flower? Tallahassee resident Tracy Stewart first noticed symptoms when her son was just one. He was not pointing to things or responding to her voice. Tracy thought he was deaf, but when she took Luke to his pediatrician, she got some devastating news. Luke was autistic. It's literally been the most trying experience of, of my life because I care about him so much and to watch him um, really struggle and, and not just struggle now but to see him lose skills like that for so long was very difficult. Luke's developmental skills are those of a two-year-old. He shows many signs of autism, including a lack of speech, repetitive use of language or mannerisms, little or no eye contact, lack of peer relationships, and fixation on parts of objects. Apple! Apple! Yay! That's right! Now in therapy, Luke is making significant progress. He is able to repeat sounds and respond to his mother's voice. Come with me. Okay. The last six months have been really exciting, though, because he's gotten much more imitative. Yes. Tracy credits his progress to early intervention, a tool experts say will drastically improve a child's development. The sooner it's provided, the better the outcomes are for children. Because Tracy followed her intuition and reached out for help early, Luke will now have a 50% chance of being mainstreamed in school and a 90% chance of one day speaking to his parents. Go give him a kiss. Thank oh, you, it's very nice. A deadly rollover on I-10 claims one life and injures another. The Florida Highway Patrol says around 6 o'clock last night, a blue minivan was traveling west on I-10 near mile marker 180 in Gatson County when the driver swerved off the road and flipped in the median. The investigation into the deadly fire at the Stepping Stones daycare continues, and Friday the State Fires Marshal's office said there doesn't appear to be any criminal conduct. Welcome back. Drivers may finally be getting a little relief at the pump. Today is a big day for WCTV. They face off in a softball game against the Tallahassee Democrat and you're going to be playing in the game maybe? I will be, yes. So